America was founded on principles of liberty and built on the backs of enslaved people. It is time for our government to face this truth. Time for America to have a full-blown national conversation about reparations. Time to adopt H.R. 40, Sheila Jackson Lee's reparations plan. Time to do what's right so that our nation can begin to heal. This is a big step, but slavery is not the only history we must confront. Jim Crow was the lived reality in America up through the 1960s. In 1964, the official policy of the U.S. government was to help families buy homes and build up wealth one generation after another for white families, not for black families. And segregation in employment, in travel, even in marriage, meant that African Americans were closed off from one opportunity after another. And there were some quieter and sometimes even more deadly forms of state-sponsored discrimination. Government redlining meant that too often toxic waste dumps and polluting factories were located far away from white communities and right next to black communities. The 1994 crime bill exacerbated the mass incarceration that locked up millions of black men and women. So don't talk about race-neutral laws. The federal government helped create the racial divide in this country through decades of active state-sponsored discrimination, and that means the federal government has a responsibility to fix it. And I have a plan for that. a lot of plans for how we can begin to fix it together. My housing plan will help families living in formerly redlined areas buy a home and start building the kind of wealth that was denied to their parents and grandparents. My plan for a Green New Deal will put racial and environmental justice at the center of our response to climate change. My health care plan will bring down the costs of prescription drugs and tackle the risks of black maternal mortality that is literally killing black women and their babies. My public education plan will put 800 billion new dollars in federal money into our public schools and quadruple the funding for schools that teach low-income children. My student debt cancellation plan. Oh, you are so ready. So my student debt cancellation plan will help close the black-white wealth gap in America. And just one more here. My higher education plan will invest $50 billion in historically black colleges and universities.
about those plans. They're all paid for, not by raising taxes one penny on working families. They're all paid for by asking the wealthy and the well-connected to just pay a fair share. Now look, the billionaires can cry all they want. It's time for a wealth tax in America. When it comes to protecting black women, we need to face the hard truth that black women and girls are being brutalized at alarming rates by people they know and trust. The murder of Alexis Crawford, a Clark Atlanta student, is an unspeakable tragedy, and my heart goes out to the Crawford family. Alexis's story happens every day across this country. We need to take meaningful action to protect women, particularly women of color. Black trans women are especially vulnerable to violence and hate crime. At least 21 black trans women have been killed this year alone. This is an epidemic and we need to call it out. As a nation, we need to stand with and for women who face one attack after another. That also means protecting abortion access. black and brown women who have been leading the fight for reproductive justice all across this country. And it is time to repeal the Hyde Amendment once and for all. The black-white wealth gap was created by decades of government-sponsored discrimination on housing and employment and it's time now to close it. So here's one of my plans. When I'm in the White House, I will create a small business equity fund for entrepreneurs of color. Get out there and start a business. On day one of my presidency, I will take executive action to boost the wages of black and brown women. Remember the washerwomen we started this with? It is time to take up their cause. Black women today still make up a large proportion of domestic and child care workers, and those women are still overworked, undervalued, and underpaid. It's time for all of us to stand with domestic workers organizing and winning all across this country and pass the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. Let's make caregiving jobs good jobs today and into the future. And let's extend New Deal federal labor and wage standards to include every domestic worker. Let's finish that job. I think of this as what we can do together, what we can do for each other. Child care, health care, free college, paychecks, entrepreneurship, the list goes on. African Americans have gotten the short end of the stick generation after generation. But we have a chance to change that, a chance to build an America where that's no longer true. 2020 is our chance 
to build a better tomorrow for every American. <laughs> Building a country that works not just for those at the top, but works for everyone, starts with protecting our democracy. And right now, our democracy is broken. How do I know? Because Brian Kemp is sitting in Stacey Abrams' chair. And we are all grateful to Stacey for what she's doing to make sure that never happens again in this country. Boy, connect the dots. Voter suppression is just one more relic of Jim Crow, and we need to say so. So that's why I have a plan to strengthen voting in America. It starts with restoring the Voting Rights Act. But let's not stop there. Let's pass a constitutional amendment establishing the right of every American citizen to vote and to get that vote counted. Let's overturn every single racist voter suppression law in this country. Let's outlaw partisan gerrymandering. And let's overturn Citizens United. Democracy is not for sale. And there's more. It's time to live our values. Look at the four words etched above the Supreme Court. Equal justice under law. But justice is not equal in America. We all know and say the names of those whose lives have been cut short with callous indifference by law enforcement. Let's honor Ayanna Stanley Jones, Rakia Boyd, Karen Gaines, Sandra Bland, Atatiana Jefferson, by reforming our criminal justice system once and for all. We criminalize too many things, we send too many people to jail, and we keep them there for too long. It's time for real change, and I have a plan for how we can do it together. And here's where it starts. Repeal the 1994 crime bill. Legalize marijuana. Undo the legacy of the war on drugs. End the cash bail system and every law that criminalizes poverty. End private prisons. No one should make a profit locking people up. Now, I know, I know what some people are thinking. That's a lot of change. It'll never happen. The fight is too hard. But here's how I see it. This isn't about whether or not we start a fight. We're already in a fight. This is about how we win that fight.